Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. And joining me to review the papers is Professor Camille Sani Fage from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kano. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining me. Good morning, and thank you for having me. All right. Um, so we're going to be starting with the punch this morning, and the punch leads with electricity tariff hike. Labor demands reversal as protests begin today. And the writer here says NLC, TUC, others to picket NERC office at discos in 36 states. So now we know that the electricity tariff will for Band A customers um, were increased with about 300%. And, well, many argue that that is a lot. And how do we move um, from about 86 naira per kilowatt to 230-something naira per kilowatt? And, you know, even manufacturers, industries are complaining. People are saying, we cannot afford this. Well, labor obviously is demanding a reversal on these amounts because they're like, we, we're here for the people and you just cannot have that jump in price. What do you think about the electricity tariff hike one and then labor demanding a reversal with the protests to begin today? In the first place, the electricity hike, a uh, bill hike, I, I think the multiply effect of uh, what is going to happen. Ministry and those uh, concerned and are, uh, are saying that it will just affect about... Uh, but if you look at uh, what will happen in industries, um, and uh, as a result, person because the issue of inflation because uh, the manufacturers will pass on this bill up which is going to have a very negative effect and is counter this, uh, the labor picketing is concerned I think this is a right thing uh, government know that uh, Issues are affecting Nigeria negatively, and the government uh, uh, is, in as much as it is a democratic government, should sure in the first place they shouldn't even allow it to go into a protest when they plan. Uh, even though this there is no plan out of it, not when they plan, and if people complain, the government should back off. So I think. Um, Labour is on the right course, and uh, many Nigerians, if not all Nigerians, would support it. Mm. Well, if we look at another story here, um, and still on uh, the on the punch, it says IMF will stop electricity subsidy. IMF tells federal government. So the um, uh, IMF has come out to say stop electricity subsidy. Now, electricity subsidy has probably been removed for just Ban A customers. And I can only imagine what would happen if, you know, it moves across all the bands from A to E. So if they're telling us to stop electricity subsidy, what does that mean for Nigerians? Because a lot of Nigerians will have to pay the, the high tariff hike. And then for, you know, electricity that you're not even seeing for 24 hours. What does that mean? You see, IMF uh, policies are anti-Nigeria. They are anti-people. In fact, even this uh, hike that we are seeing now. Yeah. Uh, let's not forget what happened when the country director said the same thing that uh, Nigeria should stop uh, subsidizing electricity. I think within one week, uh, the government responded uh, and uh, in, uh, imposed this um, new regime on Nigeria. Mm. And now you see Nigerians are crying. The labor want to strike. And yet, I am be saying we should remove subsidy in yeah. electricity. I think uh, this is a very dangerous trend. The government ought to know that an IMF government. So they should they are not abide or they should not uh, agree with uh, this kind of trend of the dangerous trend that they have because they are anti-people and the likelihood that they are 
going to degenerate into a crisis in Nigeria. Mm. That's quite that's quite sad. Um, but I mean, I'm just hoping that they always think of what is best for Nigerians. Um, whatever policies that the government is putting, they need to understand that there are people involved for this. And so you don't want a situation whereby people are plunging into poverty or living in penury because you want a, you want a nation that everyone is okay, fine, happy, flourishing. So I'm wondering all of these policies that are coming from the energy sector, um, which is the electricity sector, to even um, fuel as well. And then obviously we're seeing cybersecurity levy. So I'm wondering what all, what all these policies are here to do. Are they here to help us or are they here just because they say so? It's just, it's just something see, I'm wondering. The, the, the policies are not here to crisis that we are in now is a result, is a direct result of the IMF. You see, they push for the removal of subsidy in removal subsidy in so many things. They push for the devaluation of the Naira and they push for taking whatever they, uh, they throw down uh, to us. Uh, regardless of uh, the consequence of such policies at the expense of Nigerians. So you see Q from other countries. There is no country, we can say it, let's repeat it, without a uh, uh, peer of it that uh, takes IMF uh, uh, suggestion and develop. Mm. But why do we why do we give IMF um, that's the International Monetary Fund why do we give IMF so much relevance why do we why are we always listening to what the IMF has to say why can't we develop develop our own policies things that work for us because I feel like with things like this it's never a one size fits all you can't just say oh because this has worked in the past for other countries most definitely has to work for Nigeria why can't the Nigeria government think of what policies can work for Nigerians, tailored, bespoke to us. Why do we have to listen to the World Bank? Why do we have to listen to the IMF? Why do we have to listen to other people when we can have our own policies that work for us? The reason is simple. A part of uh, the thing is all these conditions uh, or conditionality that. Uh, um, if you look at uh, one other paper today, uh, we are having this problem. We know loan borrowing is what uh, yeah. government is planning to borrow another uh, set of billions of dollars mm. uh, by June, uh, I think, from World Bank. So this is the reason why we are obeying, uh, you know, blindly obeying IMF and World Bank uh, directives because we are neck deep in debt and we keep on but uh, you know all these conditionalities otherwise they will blackmail nigeria to so have uh, a lot of problems unless we do away with unless we do with away with this that is when we can stand at Mm. Well, um, I guess this is just the classic um, case of he um, pays the piper, dictates the tune. So as long as you're borrowing money, then whatever the IMF tells you, whatever the World Bank tells you, whatever other people tell you, you have to just do what they say because you know that you're indebted to them and you need that money. But this is where we need to come, you know, come up with our own economic growth as a nation to ensure that we have enough money, we pay our debts, you know, and whatever we want to do, we, we go ahead and do it and look for ways to ensure that there's that sustainable economic growth. So not just maybe growing and, you know, having to have a dip again is a sustainable growth, you know, for Nigeria. And I just hope that, you know, the, the, the government is listening and you're looking for ways to get us out of debt and then to a place of sustainable economic growth. So if I'm moving over to um, another story, this one talks about spending. And I think, I think what we're even talking about when we keep borrowing, we keep borrowing because, you know, 
I think Nigerian politicians sometimes can be spent thrifts. They just spend lavishly, not thinking of how um, we can ensure that we're saving enough or we're cutting costs because of where we are at the moment. And if you're saying that you want to get out of debt, you cannot be spending lavishly. This next headline says national state assemblies, assemblies to spend 724 billion naira in 2024. 700 and 24 billion naira. That is a lot of money for a country who is in debt. I just want to get your take on this. Why is the national and state assemblies trying to spend 724 billion naira? Well, for 2024. Yeah, it's, it's because uh, politics is now it, it's an industry. Mm. So that is why the all they want is uh, uh, themselves at the expense of uh, Niger cycle of debt because we borrow. Uh, the other thing we borrow, the other thing is we it doesn't reach uh, uh, the ordinary person. It is just within political cycle. And uh, so they make it uh, like a booty. And literally our politicians are insensitive that relations of uh, the ordinary person or the Nigerians and they are so self-centered, so that is why the whatever happens, all they are uh, concerned with is spending on themselves. And look at this huge amount of money at a time when uh, the old statistics show that uh, not less than 68 uh, about multidimensional poverty, and yet we are spending such huge amount of money on uh, assemblies. Now, had it to uh, you know uh, the, the public sector, I think Nigerians will feel the impact and uh, all these things that we are seeing: poverty, insecurity, uh, you know, um, in addressed. Um, so let's move over to The Guardian. Now, The Guardian leads with energy prices. Um, so it says energy prices saw by 70% cost the manufacturers 290 billion naira in quarter one. So we're seeing manufacturers and industries, you know, spending so much money. And there's quite, you know, some data here. Um, it says distribution costs spiked to 20.7%. Capacity utilization dropped from 9.7 minus 9.76 percent from um, 3.81 percent so it dropped to minus 9.76 percent from minus 3.81 that is the capacity production volume dipped to 10.14 percent from 4.6 percent minus 4.6 percent that's a lot investments dropped to minus 5.16 percent from minus 2.8 percent Employment, well, that dipped to minus 5.27% from minus 4.46%. And sales volume down to minus 7.16% from minus 1.62%. So that's like over minus 6% on that. And then it says cost of shipment rose sharply to 22.16% from um, 19 0.48 percent so you're just when we took look at these numbers it just it doesn't make sense um the average price of diesel moved from 800 naira in quarter one of 2023 to 1600 naira in quarter one of 2024 so that is a hundred percent increase this times two basically the average energy supply to manufacturers dropped to 8.5 hours a day an electricity tariff for band a up from 68 naira per kilowatt to 206 naira per kilowatt so you're just seeing all of these costs um uh, and they are fixed costs because they are things that you have to do you have to use to run your business so it's not even something that you can say oh we'll leave it out and you're saying that they're not even making as much money because production is low 
supply is low sales volume is low so with all of this if we keep saying that we want um, investors to come in we want manufacturing industries to come in when we see this kind of numbers don't you think that would make them not want to come because they're like this isn't profitable for me it's already as a policy that we have uh, that was what i said it has a multiply effect uh, on nigeria and nigerian economy mm -hmm. already manufacturers many of uh, in this and uh, many of uh, the multinational uh, corporations are closing shop and living new ones will not come in such a situation because look this and uh, you cannot have a hash uh, and then you expect uh, the business to flourish to manage to survive what they are going consumers so uh, if I, that will now uh, accelerate or uh, uh, exacerbate the issue of uh, inflation in Nigeria. And those that uh, cannot do it, they will hold and uh, close and go away. So I think this is a very counterproductive to all the policies that the government is trying to push. That is why we say the government ought to look is the fact that Nigeria is not a manufacturing uh, country. Nigeria is heavily import uh, dependent country. So all these policies that are being pushed down to us by IMF and World Bank are counterproductive because they could have been productive or they are productive in uh, industrialized uh, countries where they can produce and sell it. They can devalue their money then the uh, product will be consumers we import so all that are being pushed down to us is what we are seeing for nigeria for the government and for the leaders uh, the sooner they do that the better going look at what happened within one to this level now, what would happen if we continue on this three years or eight years or what? Catastrophe for Nigeria. I think I think that's the right word, you know, catastrophe, because that that is, you know, what is going to happen. That's what we can see in the making. Because definitely nobody will want to come to a place that is not profitable. I'm not going to invest so much money, billions of naira, billions of dollars into a country that I don't think is going to be sustainable for me to get my money out. And when everything is super expensive and there's hyperinflation, and I don't know, I don't know where we're going to as a nation, but... I mean, all we can always do is hope and pray. And I know we, I say that's all we do in Nigeria. We need to start putting in the work. And when we put in the work, that is when you, it's evidence. That's when you get to realize, you know, what the Nigerian dream is supposed to be. Anyways, let's move over to um, another story. This one talks about Serap Agbakoba CSOs head to court as federal government quietly withdraws cybersecurity levy. I know we touched on this um, earlier on, but I just want to get your take on this. This cybersecurity levy, and you're seeing that Serap um, CSOs, they're heading to court um, with the federal government based on this. What is your take? A president said that uh, they, they are withdrawing the levy. Quietly. But why is Sarah? Mm. Why Sarah and others are going is because they are trying to push uh, the central bank that draw the circular. Up to now, uh, we just hear that the government, uh, but uh, central bank is yet to issue. A, a, that uh, a position. So I think that is why they are there in all. It has been fixed, uh, but uh, I think that will now expedite action. Uh, the central bank will should 
is the, the government said they are withdrawing it. The central government should uh, quickly issue this thing so that they can litigation that is going to take long on the issue. Hmm. Well, we just, <laughs> I, 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 I really do not get the cybersecurity levy and I mean, there was a chart of how much were being charged from these banks. Now you have the maintenance charge, you have the, um, if you want to replace your card, you have that, you have the stamp duty, you have um, SMS alert charge, you have so many charges. I know that the stamp duty and the cybersecurity levy is supposed to go to the federal government, but I'm just wondering why you're taking so much from Nigerians and you're not giving as much. We have so little, yet you decide to take so much from us. And I'm just like, at, at this point, what do you want? Like, what is the government trying to do? Are you trying to just, you know, twist our arm? Because whether you, you like it or not, people are going to, you know, do something someday, somehow, because you're backing them up against the wall. And if you do not start thinking about Nigerians and what will favor Nigerians, then that day is just going to come and and we hope that it doesn't come to that i mean that's not something we're praying for we just hope that the government start to think deeply go to the table go to the drawing board and say what can we do for nigerians what can we do to make them happy what can we do to alleviate the sufferings what can we do to ensure that foreign investors who are going to come in are making good money what can we do to ensure that our economy is thriving sustainable economic growth that is what we expect from the government and i just hope you know that they do that as quickly as possible because we don't want a situation whereby there's going to be a revolution or something um so talking about the government and you know all of all i've just said saying we need them to start doing more the former president of nigeria um, Olusegun Obasanjo has said he made a statement he said nigeria is complex but not difficult to govern. And so here on The Guardian, that's what it reads. It says, Nigeria is complex, but not difficult to govern, says Obasanjo. What do you think about this? Do you think Nigeria is such a complex nation and maybe our leaders just don't know what to do? But the former president has said it's not so difficult to govern. What do you think about this? You know, it's true what you said. Well, Nigeria is complex in terms of, you know, uh, the, the population, the, the diversity, and so on. These are all what uh, makes uh, a country complex, uh, uh, like Nigeria. But what he said that Nigeria is easy to govern, I think he's reiterating what uh, Margaret Thatcher long, said long ago. The reason is that. Um, Nigerians are politically docile. That is what makes it easy for any leader to uh, govern. Otherwise, all these policies that we are seeing in so many places, even 1% of the, the policy is enough uh, to you know, generate uh, uprisings in such a way that people are not saying a revolution or violence yeah. but uh, you know criticism so that so much so that they cannot force the government to uh, to change its own course for example before the current situation in Sudan we have been hearing when the government will put just like a cobble uh, increase a cobble on sugar and the people will come out and protest and the government has to back out that is what uh, makes them, you know, very difficult to govern because uh, once you have this thing, they don't sit, uh, sit down and, uh, you know, accept whatever it is. But here in Nigeria, it is so easy to govern the people because already uh, certain instruments, four of them are being used to make Nigeria politically docile. One is the issue of poverty. Deliberately, Poverty is weaponized and people are being pushed to this. That is why you see tax here, uh, subsidy there, and so on and so forth. And secondly, the issue of hunger. So it is also a weapon that has been weaponized by the leaders uh, to make the people, you know, uh, so politically docile. And the other thing is illiteracy. 
I'm not saying the uh, political, like, you know, an awareness, you know. It, it's not that uh, they don't read and write, but mm -hmm. we are made to in such a way that uh, no Nigerian, many Nigerians don't think that they have a right from the government to provide goods and services to them. So they think whatever the leaders do to them, uh, is a paper. They think whatever the leaders are doing like this, uh, what we said about the National Assembly spending such amount of money on themselves, the uh, ordinary Nigerian would think it's a right for the leaders to do it. And the other thing is a tyranny of the leadership. Deliberately, the state instruments are used to suppress the people. Where you have um, people trying to do it, like what we are saying now, the labor is saying that they are going to picket. So the state instruments are going to use, be used to push that uh, instrument. Either overtly they will use violence, the police and security to push them down, or they will run down to industrial court and get uh, judgment and whatever. So these are the reasons why it is easy to govern Nigeria because already weapons have been sharpened and they are effectively used so you can manipulate and do whatever you want and the leadership can do it and sleep with suppose their eyes closed. <laughs> That's a lot. Well, I think at the end of the day, if you do not know what to do, then you shouldn't be vying for the office because as a leader, you should be there to ensure that you're leading the people correctly. So if you are confused or you think, uh, I'm not very sure on what to do here, then you'd have no business being a leader or being a politician. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is a situation where people see government uh, politics as service. But why they see it as an investment, as a business? Uh, they don't have idea. All their oh, idea is to go and make money to enrich mm. themselves. So that is why every person will run into politics. You know, those who are supposed to serve the people uh, cannot do it because one, it has been monetized, and uh, you know, they, uh, no matter how good you are, you will not have the money to do it. And those who have the money, they just invest. Look at uh, the billions and billions of naira that people are investing in order to get elected. Mm. And you know that is what is going to happen. Whoever invested his money to be elected, he will be there to recuperate what he uh, put and uh, give to gain. So that is why where we are where we are. And that is why what uh, former president said is 100% true, that it is a complex country, and uh, it is easy to govern. In other places, complex countries are difficult to govern because the complexity will make leaders to stand on their toe and work for the country, unlike what is happening in Nigeria. Hmm. Well, if you're saying that you see it as a business, then that is a big problem. In fact, that is our fundamental problem. If people think politics or going into the government is a business, why don't you start your own business? You cannot gamble with a whole country or say the country is my business. And then if I invest and get elected, all I'm trying to do is get my money back. It is not for you. It is for a nation. You are just part of that nation. You are one citizen. And so you can't just think it's everything is for you. So I think that's a fundamental problem in Nigeria. And we need our leaders to start to change their mindsets towards, you know, govern government in general, towards governing people. You, you need to know that you're going there to serve and not going there for your own pocket to enrich your pocket. No, that is not how it is done. And that is not how it is supposed to be done. Even if Nigeria has its own peculiarities, you still need to have that, um, that part of humanity where you're thinking of others and know that these are your brothers and your sisters regardless where they come from or what kind of dialect they speak we are one nigeria and we need to start thinking of how to move nigeria forward um 
before we wrap it up i want to get your take on some political matters so now this is talking about the crisis in river state um here on the daily on on the on the daily independence um it still talks about tinubu won't take political sides in reverse political um, crisis and that is being said by the president on other papers as well um on the guardian it says rivers elders caution fubara against tampering with assembly quarters um on the punch it says rivers assembly fubara pro wiki lawmakers clash over relocation so there's a lot about you know river states there's a lot in the a lot of crisis in fact um the minister of the fct in some week has said you know he regrets supporting Fubara to succeed him um, as the governor of River State. I want to just get your take quickly before we wrap it up on the political matters happening in River State. You see what is happening in the rivers is an epitome of uh, the Nigerian politics where we have very weak institutions. So personalities uh, are now the dictators of what happened. It is a personality clash between Wiki and Fubara, and we are seeing what is uh, going to happen. And the other thing is because of there is uh, impunity in Nigerian politics. So whoever is strong, he can do whatever he wants. So that is why we are having uh, what we are having in rivers and other places like here in Kano and in so many places. But I think the government has to come in here because if we allow things like this to be happening i'm not saying the government should, uh, federal government should take side but uh, at least it is in the interest of the country uh, and in the interest of the democracy to see that such things uh, do not just degenerate into a serious political crisis of course we have to take a lesson from what happened in our past republic from what happened in the second republic and even in the aborted uh, Republic. If you have pockets of crisis here and there, they will metamorphose and now degenerate and perhaps give a reason for uh, the military to come because one of the things is the military seems of uh, itself and they look, they are opportunistic, they look at the opportunities for them to strike. So if you have strikes here, crisis here and there and so on, there is poverty, there is this. They will take, uh, they will come in, and uh, at the end of it, it will do no good to anybody in Nigeria. Hmm. So uh, there's another story that I would really like to take um, here on the Daily Independent. It says people standing trial are dining with judges and Sijin, and that's been said by Clark. What do you think about this? Because I know there is this whole thing where people do not um, trust our judicial system. In fact, there's no credibility to them because they're like, you guys just do whatever you like. Um, you, most times it's always like the highest bidder. So you're easily bribed when it comes to court cases. Um, when it comes to political matters, you you just elect. In fact, we don't elect our, our, our politicians anymore. The courts are the ones who give them that election. And and so if we're seeing this and says people standing trial are dining with judges, what does that say for the judicial system? Isn't that just making us not trust them even more and more? Because how can you be whining and dining with people that are on trial that you are supposed to stay out of and say we need um, our judgment to be as fair um, and unbiased as possible? But you're here whining and dining with them. What do you think? It's a serious indictment on our uh, yeah, judicial system uh, because what it says is that those who are whining and dining are the big shots. Mm. The ordinary person are already learning, uh, you know, languishing in, in jail. Some will spill it on few cases, they will be there because they don't have the where we sell to them with uh, uh, the, 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 the judges. So I think this is an indictment. It shows the level of corruption uh, in Nigeria, which permeates all sectors, and uh, the judiciary is not uh, immune to it. So that is why the big shots are having their way out. That is why, you see, even if you look at uh, uh, corruption, when the, the big shots are caught, you know, what happened is they will be given plea bargaining, and some of them will not even have plea bargaining. They will have judgment, and they will now find a way to say it's their fundamental right, it's their decent, and so on, while the ordinary persons are the ones that uh, they are the rest of the law. <laughs> well, 
I think at the end of the day, we expect our judicial system to have some form of credibility. That's the only way um, people can trust you. That's the only way people can respect you know whatever um order that you give you can't be wanting and dining with people on trial and still maintain that level of credibility it's just an indictment and i don't know how that works finally on the business ng well it leads with nigeria to receive 2.25 billion dollar loan in june and i know you've touched on that um but there's a smaller headline at the bottom that says nigeria faces looming hunger crisis and this is quite alarming to me because i'm like are we not having that hunger crisis already? So if they're saying um, Nigeria faces looming hunger crisis, I wonder how long that would be for. What do you think as we wrap it up here? I think this is a, a wrong ahead. And we are already in the crisis. Yeah. Like, I, they, I'm sure that we are facing the uh, complicated, I mean, you know, <laughs> exacerbation of the crisis. But we are already in the crisis, mm -hmm. where you have uh, seventy percent of uh, the population uh, multi having multidimensional poverty and hunger. I think there is nothing beyond that. So, but uh, it's a warning. The government ought to uh, listen to this and take measures to see that uh, what we are in, what they are saying, it is going to be worse. So I think uh, the government ought to take uh, measures to head up these things. Like we alluded to it, these are situations that uh, make it fertile for even the military to. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that they are doing... Know, these are things that uh, make it better to have crisis, yes. Hmm. These are some of the things that may make it, uh, you know, people to come out and revolt. So I yeah. think the government should be wary of that thing. Yeah, because when people are backed up against the wall, you, you can't ascertain how they will react. You can't ascertain what they would do. So if we're saying, you know, facing looming hunger crisis, I know that we're already neck deep into that. And I'm just wondering for how long. I'm wondering when the government is actually going to do something about this. But we're hoping, we're praying that things get better soon in Nigeria. And fingers crossed, it just would happen. We want to say thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure reviewing the papers with you. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you, Billy. Thank you much for having me. All right. Okay, we've been speaking with Professor Camille Sanifage from the Department of Bayero of Political Science in Bayero University, Kano. And we've just been taking stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break, look at the weather, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Please stay with us.